c'est de l'argent. Federal authorities have initiated a manhunt for William Butcher. Kicking things off with some previously on news position and narration. Communication is everything. Eventually we'll know what's going on here, but right now it's just distracting and hard to give a shit about when I just want to get back to the people that were literally just inside a whale. Details are still emerging about the soup terrorists. Newspo previously awning after the previous previously on news position and narration had narr- Who keeps writing this shit? No one can debate that New Yorkers owe their lives to the brave actions taken by Stormfront. Your fake news doesn't know how to debate correctly. This cabin manages to both overcandle and overlamp. Who produced this show anyway? Illumination? Delivering liquid to someone's mouth hole with your feculent draggled hand wieners. Having a giraffe for a grandmother. I ever tell you about my recurring dream? I'm on stage. Not giving someone a chance to lie and answer yes so they don't have to listen to your stupid dream that no one cares about. We can't have anonymous skull exploding assassins walking around. Being okay with well known skull exploding assassins walking around. I found Becca, or at least our best guess where she is. Telling someone you have the thing they care about most and then pausing before saying, well, actually, I'm just guessing. I'm sorry! I I can only hold a shape for so long before it really hurts. And coincidentally, that amount of time is exactly the amount of time the writers thought we would buy this bullshit scenario. Storming an off the books Vought compound alone. Butcher, how is it possible that you're dumber than you look? Marvin T. Milk would be lactose intolerant at TV sins. Kids are weeper. Don't want them to get snow all over me jacket. Me jacket. Can we talk about Homelander's shoulder eagles for a second? Not only are those things ugly as sin, but they are completely impractical. HL would be catching those things on all sorts of stuff throughout his day and accidentally maiming his coworkers just by turning around near them. As if Homelander needs a reason to accidentally maim his coworkers. Intentionally lingering on the number of the floor Homelander got off on is an attempt to get me to say nice. But also, nice. Would you like an almond joy? Removing the joy because you're allergic to almonds. The screens of this show are the bullshittiest bullshit to ever be shit out of a bowl. What even is all this mess and how would it be helping anyone in this room in the slightest? The creators were like, just put a bunch of small stuff on there so the jerks over at TVS can't read it or sin it. Well, first, you have greatly underestimated us. And also, stop calling us TVS. Look, Andy, they take time. How much time? I'm guessing the time it will take will be strangely connected to how strong the ratings of the show remain. <laughs> Just a guess. So I have a second cousin who lives around there. I could tell Vought that I'm going to visit. Tricking the most powerful company in the world with literal superheroes on its payroll with the old second cousin routine. Seriously, the amount of disbelief the show wants me to suspend just so Starlight and Huey can get some hang time together is astronomical. Also, I know what you did, Edible Arrangements. Papyrus! What the f*** is Vought for Tots? It's new fitness outreach for toddlers. Being a new fitness outreach for toddlers instead of the long-awaited reveal about how they recruit babies into their soup development program. Uh, good, you're here. Because I came here to kick you out of the seven and boy howdy, isn't it nice you just happen to be in the room and already discussing things because you also just happen to see Shockwave at the elevators. We won't dare play the song because We Didn't Start the Fire might be powerful enough to force a sin removal, but these two falling in love against the backdrop of AIDS, crack, and Bernie Getz makes it seem like they're not actually hearing the lyrics. Look, on the socio-political satirical front, this show never stops going hard, and I can't help but never stop respecting them for it. Have you heard of the lovers of Baldaro? No, and I also forgot you were doing these weird zero context when Super Harry Met Sally interview cut-ins, so I'm all different sorts of confused right now. You smell like a wet dog. Misunderstanding the concept of foreplay. Are you gonna tell me what's wrong? Or are you just gonna stain my clean sheets with your sweaty despair? Misunderstanding the concept of pillow talk. What could this grieving all alone ever do? Sometimes people are different in the ways they handle trauma and grief, and different coping mechanisms can have different levels of efficacy depending on the... Oh, were you just stating a rhetorical question with no interest whatsoever in the nuance and depth of a possible answer or discussion? Right. Carry on, then. He'd take me to Dunkin' on the sly, and he would get me a chocolate cream-filled donut. Going to Dunkin' for donuts? Dunkin's for coffee. And maybe one of those breakfast croissant sandwiches. <laughs> You're better off going to a gas station for donuts than Dunkin'. I mean, other than the raspberry filled. You know what, guys? I might be really hungry right now. Having your donuts for three minutes already and only eating this much. Especially considering Milk's donut is somehow still whole even though we saw him take a big bite earlier and a second bite from behind. Any part of your body, and I mean any part, mm -hmm. that you dry wipe, you're not cleaning anything. Wow, that really contextualized the argument he had with Frenchie in the first season. You need to eat my clenched asshole. But I wish it didn't. It'll be okay. Especially for the guy in the passenger seat with his arm hanging out of the window. Not only was he not in the line of impact, he didn't even exist a few seconds ago. And that van went much further off the road than this. Did the continuity department just take the week off? Any place around here, 
of half a million bloody cameras. Introducing this complaint about the age of social media without giving us the slightest idea of how he got past a single one of those million bloody cameras. The place that has no cameras looks like the place that needs all the cameras. Who the f built this compound? Well, that's it. Butcher found Becca. Primary plot driver complete. It's been a good two seasons. Sad to see the show go, but now that these two have reunited, there's no way to use any other bullshit to continue on. I'm out. I'm going out of the last scrape and I didn't know. Thinking past performance is a guarantee of future results. Oh, no. Why you can't climb that fence? Bullshit. We all know kids are excellent climbers. It's part of what makes the threat they pose to society very real. Ignoring your sleep apnea. Is that an Almond Joy? The second mention of Almond Joys in this episode is such a clear indication of product placement that it completely takes me out of the reality of a show that has super powered beings in it. The antiseptic wipes, really? You haven't noticed any of this. Thinking that antiseptic wipes are a sign of OCD as opposed to a sign of being a person who just wants to clean their hands. I sleep about four hours a night. I wish I slept four hours a night. I mean, I'm too busy chewing my fingernails down to the quick. In celebrity competitions. Just wondering if Homelander is waiting around every corner to kill me. The comfort at which this human with one of the most recognizable faces in the world has these kinds of conversations at this volume in a public place is baffling. As legend has it, the top blanket is rarely washed, so they're touching the top blanket while doing the thing in the place that is the main reason you should never touch the top blanket. Wait, 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 wait. I got it. Starlight uses her internal dimming switch, and now I'm completely confused about her powers. If she pulled energy from the lamp to do this, then the light should return to normal after she stops drawing power. Unless she's continually drawing power from the lamp, which would make the Sin Huey not being worried about his Huey. So he asked me to get one of these with him. Not having the physical capabilities of pronouncing the word no. Rebecca's back already on the same night. How is this not suspicious to the guards? Did the writers just bump up her previously unknown smoking habit to a pack a day? Getting Urban in an Outback. Get it? Because his name is Carl Urban and the Outback is the opposite of the city and he's Australian. Do you get it? 90% of this episode is pre and post coital chats. And all the boys get some except him. M. Well, at least he got a donut. Do you want one? No. <sighs> Not having the mental capabilities of understanding the word no. I just act like, you know, Carol f***ing Brady all day. How dare you? You keep America's mom's f***ing name out your f***ing mouth. Wasted space. Seriously, you can put like a hundred Shake Shacks there. Me and Elena are just friends. Elena and I are just friends, Maeve. Honestly, that's the most offensive thing I've heard this entire scene. Look, news position is a scourge on all media, but in this single episode of a single TV show, this is now the sixth time a character has received information or motivation via a random news broadcast. Just take the leap, the boys. Do an entire episode that's just news broadcasts. At least that would show a little creativity. Lucar, please. Deus mon corona. And y'all are just some damn fools. Letting a secondary character say the most authentic and truthful thing in the history of your show. When I was a kid, something happened between my family and Vaughn, which I'd rather not talk about, but it was bad. And this just feels like the script's way of saying, I don't want to pay myself into a corner in case we get a third season and have to make sure any of this makes sense. A little black girl accusing a white superhero of murder in these parts? Up until this point, the show's been taking on the superhero problem mostly from the perspective of celebrity and hero worship, addressing unfair power dynamics as they relate to literal physical strength. So finally seeing how superpowers could collide with the history of race relations in America is pretty deep. And to be clear, I said deep, not the deep. So quickly take your sin back before I have to give one to the deep. She's probably dead by now. <laughs> oh, no, no. I... I just happen to have an outdated form of news delivery here that also just so happens to have the big reveal that's directly related to why you came here. That's Liberty. So Valerie saw Liberty up close because she was in the car and witnessed her brother's murder. But if Liberty was in the public eye enough to be in Budweiser adverts, she must have had enough exposure that other people would recognize her as well. But who knows what Compound V can do? Ooh, oh, I, I know this one. Whatever the f the show needs it to do. Who prepared the meme PowerPoint for Homelander to click through and why? Also, I don't like a single one of these memes. Here's a better one I just came up with off the top of my head. Much better, right? This constant need to be loved by everyone is kind of pathetic. What? I don't need to be loved by everyone. Just a few thousand people on a daily basis and I should be fine. Oh, you weren't, you weren't talking about me, were you? You don't need 50 million people to love you. You need 5 million people f***ing pissed. This being true. 
Then we have Homelander all over again, and there's two f***ing assholes in this world. The show makes me long for a world with only two f***ing assholes. Drinking this many Red Bulls, and by this many, I mean drinking even one Red Bull. Also, I love how the show is like, show a bunch of empty Red Bulls so the audience will know they've been looking through footage for a long time and it won't make this happening at this point in the episode not feel so conveniently timed. Nice try, story wizards. Your magic has no power here. Also, also, in a world full of soups, can Red Bull be sued for false advertising? Or does it actually give you wings? Listen, if you're ever in the mood for another Almond Joy. The title of this episode should have been Almond Joy Presents News Position. We've now found out that these interviews are about finding the deep a wife. And the only reason we couldn't have known that sooner is so the episode could pretend to be avant-garde or some shit. Well, joke's on you, show. I don't even know what an avant is or why they're so hard to protect. I don't need anyone but myself. Does that negligee just transform with doppelganger? Earlier, when he couldn't hold the transformation because he was tired, it was still on him, so doesn't that mean it's an actual physical object? The truth is, we're going to need to see how that negligee looks on every member of the Seven to really suss this out. For science. The back of this body double, I mean doppelganger's hair, is visibly different from the back of Homelander's. That's just shoddy craftsmanship. But again, if staying changed takes great effort, as mentioned earlier, how is Doppelganger efforting as a corpse? Shouldn't he have changed back the second his neck was broken? Or was the visual metaphor a bit too important? Look, she's cutting up an almond joint. It wasn't your fault. It's not your fault. I ever tell you about my recurring dream? Where I'm being chased by a giant Listerine bottle. We can't have anonymous skull exploding assassins walking around. It's annoying. It gets everywhere. F***ing terrorist was my safe, not hers. Mine? Well, sh I f***ing love fat kids. Do you even hear yourself? My father was a drinker and a fiend. It's been 48 years. It's been 84 years. Let me tell you right now, it won't work. Well, if you were me, then I'd be you! And I'd use your body to get to the top! It's Ryan that I care about, not us. Yeah, and then what? And then Vought raises him without a mother, right? Then we have Homelander all over again, and then there's two fucking assholes in this world. We could disappear, all right? Just start again, start a new family. Give me back my son! Kimiko, look at me. Look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> 